welcome to the oral program by the heritage center and uh, i am here with uh, professor narajan and kamala kritivasan and uh, professor narajan two of us were there in the department for a long time for a long time and so on so it's nice to have a i welcome you professor narajan and let us share our experience with the heritage center Uh, at the outset, I wish to thank the members of the Heritage Center for having given me this great opportunity to be here on this occasion to have a very nice discussion with uh, Dr. Kamala Kritivasan, who has been my colleague, a very learned colleague in the Computer Science Department. I also thank the Heritage Center that this. for giving this opportunity and i am very happy to be with my former colleague professor narayan who was one of the leading person in establishing the computer center here well, if i want to recount my early days i was born bred up at chidambaram one of the, the the best places you know in the, in the in the mythological sense now Lord Dan Raja is there, you know, uh, acting as a cosmic dancer. Then I was uh, bred up, educated at Chidambaram. Uh, my initial schooling was in Pachepath High School. I did up to SSLC. Then I studied in Annamalai University. In those days, there was uh, no concept of eleventh uh, and twelfth. the actual uh, uh, 11th and 12th was called intermediate in those days in the university so i did two years of intermediate two years of bsc and the four years of chemical engineering be chemical in those days uh, it's a very interesting course because it was once called bsc tech at that time the head of the department was uh, one person from pilani so what he did was he wanted to revise the syllabus to make the course at par with other disciplines be it mechanical or be it electrical or be it civil in a similar way he wanted to make this as be chemical so a lot of uh, mechanical engineering components were included in the subject like tube machines you know machine design and drawing then heat engines so all those uh, components were included Similarly, electrical engineering components were included. Many civil engineering components were included, like graphic statics, theory of structures, tons of materials. Okay. So it's a very interesting composite course. There was also a move that uh, they can extend for one year and offer be mechanical, but later on that uh, concept was given up due to various reasons. So this is my initial um, educational background. Then I moved to see after completing my B.E. Chemical, I moved to A.C. College of Technology as a research associate. So I was there for nearly two and a half years. You know, quite surprisingly, I was allocated alloc alloc allocated to the engineering, I mean, department of A.C. College of Technology. i was teaching electrical engineering i was teaching mechanical engineering right then the computer uh, not exactly computing some aspects of statistical analysis so this is my initial career commencement so after spending two and a half years under dr ladda some of he took a fancy for me So in 1960, I moved over to IIT Madras. Right. So it is uh, September 1960. You know, one year after its inception. So I have grown along with this institute. It's a great institute. See, when you talk about IIT, IIT is not just an organization. It's a magnificent concept. It's a phenomenon. we try to see a lot of things you know happening within iit at that point in time is one of the the greatest institute especially in the south so 
I I started working in the department of chemical engineering. Even though it was a chemical engineering, I was more interested in process control. I was I was set up the process control laboratory. Then I was working for my MTech program as well as PhD program as a student. I was both a faculty and a student, so we had that kind of advantage in those in those times. So we were allowed to register for MTech as well as for PhD program. So my PhD program is more on um, drug reduction. Surprisingly, Professor Nigam was my main guide. and dr venkateshwar lu the head of the department of chemical engineering was my co-guide now this uh, project was uh, given to me by professor nigam professor of mathematics so i had been actually interacting with the mathematics department also from that time onwards so the the actual that was the first thesis from india especially on drug reduction previously it was done in mit Dr. Burke, who was actually working in that particular area, it was focused on viscoelasticity. So I did a lot of programming. Actually, I did a lot of uh, analysis on that, and uh, we also came up with uh, new theories on that drug reduction, and then we published a lot of papers also on that. So it's a very very interesting area, and. Uh, uh, this it, it, this work also pertains to non newtonian fluids especially what is a newtonian fluid there are other uh, uh, i mean fluids like pseudo plastic dilatant uh, fluids geopectic pyxotropic there are so many such fluids so when you want to have the control system of such kinds of fluids how do you do it So these are all some of the aspects which I concentrated on that PhD program. So that is my my PhD level. So I actually published number of papers on those on those areas, and uh, I should I should say that uh, Professor Nigam played a very important role in making up the thesis. In fact, uh, the two I mean uh, the the people who have actually valued my thesis one in west germany one in japan they actually appreciated the thesis and then they gave a very complimentary reports about that so this is about my phd program want to ask any questions when did you move to computer center started i moved to computer center in fact uh, it was not a transfer It was a selection. I got selected in computer science in 1973. So at the time of the first stop number to start the the computer science department, um, Professor Sampath was the director at that time. So some of I do not know. Well, twelve people were interviewed, and I was selected because at that time when I was in uh, computer in chemical engineering. I used to interact with Dr. Ramani in the management department. He was the head of management department at that time. We wrote a book also on computer programming with industrial and engineering applications. Now the three authors, Dr. Ramani, Dr. Koti Sharma, and my humble myself, right? So we three wrote a book at that time. It was very very popular in those days. I remember that it was a very popular book, and I think you mainly used Fortran in that. Fortran. The main focus was on Fortran seventy seven. So we did that particular topic. I mean, the Fortran language. We brought out all the nuances of that language, how it should be used in the scientific computation. At that time, three languages were very, very popular. One is the Fortran. The other one is Cobol. The other one uh, language is PL one. PL one is uh, the combination of Fortran and Cobol. It has all the, I mean, scientific uh, computational elements of uh, Fortran and all the uh, output uh, aspects of Cobol. It's a very nice, uh, I mean, integration of Fortran and Cobol. It was used on the IBM three seventy system. 
Now to talk about uh, this IBM 370, it's a very, very interesting and exciting experience and exacting experience also. Because we need to spend a lot of days in understanding the nuances of the hardware as well as the software complications, you know. It's a very huge uh, operating system. We call it as MBS. It has both uh, the, the system management function, the recovery management function, then the, the task management function, job management function. You'll find that uh, operating system is a very good management specialist. Okay, because we are working on multi-programming environment. See, that one system which we, which we got had that particular facility of multi-programming. At the time, six programs can run simultaneously. So, it was operated on two modes. One is multi-programming with fixed number of tasks, multi-programming with variable number of tasks. So, how to improve the output? So many people you know, used to work on uh, IBM 370 and then uh, that uh, in fact uh, Westernman people were very very skeptical whether they can make the full utilization of that IBM 370. In fact we justified that we are capable and uh, we used to have lot of projects implemented on IBM 370. It is a very very interesting experience for us for all of us. For the first time we are exposed to that kind of fourth generation computer. It was given to us as a gift from the West Germ from the Federal Republic of Germany and uh, it has actually catered to the needs and the requirements of all the sections of people from various departments. Very interesting experience for us. And uh, see when once uh, I will tell you the operational aspects also when when the temperature rises in the ambience automatically the system will get shut down. Right. I think most of you might not have seen that IBM 370 and then uh, how it was actually working. We have a very, very pleasant experience for all of us, you know. We feel proud that we have worked on IBM 370. So at that time, you know, I was the first staff member to start this and later on Professor Mahabala joined. And he is one of the outstanding computer scientists who disseminated the computer culture in the south. So he played a very vital role and uh, he brought up the department to what it was at that point in time. Now he recruited all the people. I would say that my own students joined the computer science department, Dr. C. R. Muthukrishnan, Dr. Kalyana Krishnan, they were all my students actually. And they took over and they superseded me. So it's a great uh, matter of pride that your own student supersedes you, right? And I was working with them, I was working under them also. So initially I may be acting as head and then when Mahabala was not there, I used to act as head. But uh, later on, you know, with the flux of time, our own students, you know, you have the privilege of working under them. So that was for, for some time. So this is uh, initially about uh, our computer center, right, and then the computer science department. I, I should say that uh, Professor Mahabala has been a uh, 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 driving force to improve or to get a lot of things for the department of computer science. I basically I am a mathematician. I did B.Sc. Mathematics and M.Sc. Mathematics at Madras Christian College, Tamra. In both B.Sc. and M.Sc., I got the first rank in Madras University. But before the M.Sc. results came out, I was married and I was in Lucknow. So at that point of time, I did not know whether I will have a career life or not. Then the results came out. Then the, my professor, Rani Siromani, she had uh, been working in the area of formal languages. I don't know for what reason she took that area, but it's an upcoming area which has got application in compiler, I think. 
So formal languages was a computer related topic and she submitted her thesis around that time. When I finished my MSc, uh, the results came out and then I, I got the first rank and the chairman of the committee processing the marks was SD Nika. He asked this, uh, the difference between the first rank and the second rank was too large and he said, why don't you ask this boy to join our IIT Madras to do PhD. But then my professor said, she's a, it's not a boy, it's a girl and she's married and she's in Alakmona. Oh, then he left. After six months, for some reason, I came back and my husband was very cooperative in my career development. And uh, after I came back, I thought of taking up some job, but uh, um, it was in around March and then the, some colleges said they come in June when the academic uh, session starts. But then uh, at the time I realized that I was pregnant. So what happened is my professor said, you can take uh, care of the child and you continue doing PhD, will apply for UGC fellowship and you do. So okay, uh, I joined for PhD program, got the UGC fellowship. And I started working in the area of automata theory. I did not know that it was very much related to computer at that time. But once I started working in the area, I liked the area very much and uh, I was working on array grammars. The automata theory is basically a part of the, it is very useful in compiler writing. The compiler has two parts, the analysis and the synthesis part. The analysis part has the <coughs> Parser and the lexical analyzer and the parser has a lot of theory behind it. So, ultimately the lexical analysis uses regular expression and that also is base, basics in automata theory. At that time, even in US, many universities did not have computer science departments. All the people who moved over to computer science department are working in the computer science department were either from electrical engineering or from mathematics. And there are many mathematics people who are working in that area and they looked at it from the point of semi groups, groups, operations of the groups and things like that. So actually I was looking at it though grammar, uh, I worked on grammars, it was more like you know uh, from theoretical point of view. I knew Fortran a little bit, but not uh, worked with any computer system at that time. The computer center was started in IIT at in 1973. And there were six basic, only MTech program was there. Six basic courses were taught at for MTech, out of which two were theoretical courses. One was called the ICO, Introduction to Computer Organization, most Boolean algebra and uh, other things were taught there. The other topic was automata and formal languages. That is also basic in uh, computer science. One Professor Lakshmi Varahan was teaching those two courses. He was also teaching an advanced course at the time for the MTech program. And uh, he got a very good offer from US and he had to leave in 1975. He, around October or November, he wanted to leave. Then if he left, there was no other person to teach us. Of course, Professor Muthubishan could have taught it. Mahabala is, of course, teaching ICO. But they had other courses to teach also. So this the uh, theoretical courses, there was nobody to teach the MTech students. And they were frantically looking for a person who could teach the theoretical courses. And there was an advertisement uh, local for a research associate and so on. So they sent to some colleges and it came to Christian College also. Then my professor said, why don't you take, try to, I had just finished PhD at that time. So why don't you try for this uh, research associate position? I said, I do not know programming. I knew a little bit of Fortran programming, but I have not worked with any computer system. So how can I apply for that? No, no, you just try. So I applied. Uh, Professor Mahabala called me uh, to his house and he interviewed me. Then he said, what is your uh, background and all that. I said, I don't have 
very good knowledge of programming but my area is the MTK computer science and I had some very good publications at that time. So he said there are two courses to be taught now you have to teach them and you sit along with the MTech students and learn other topics of computer science. So, okay I said then I joined in October 1st 1975 as a research associate. Now before I joined Professor Mahabala had to go to US for some reason and then he said I will be out of uh, country when you join. Join and uh, teach the MTech students regular expressions and finite automata. So the first day I joined around 9 o'clock. I gave the joining report. 10 o'clock I took the class on regular expressions and then 11 o'clock I went to the administrative building to finish the formalities. So I was sitting with the uh, MTech uh, students for some time to learn the other topics of computer science. And these two courses, basically theoretical, I used to teach the MTech. Both were core courses. And uh, what? So after some time, uh, I became familiar with the other topics also. Mm -hmm. and then. Uh, but still I continued to work in theory, till the end I worked on theory but with application to other uh, areas. IBM 370 was the machine at the time. For me it was very fast, uh, very good experience or I found it very nice to see that machine and have the opportunity of working uh, with uh, such machine. I tried to do programming and learn programming and also it used to be the punch card reader and punch uh, card printing machines at the time. All the jobs used to be printed in punched cards and then they will submit it to the input, uh, some counter will be there. They, they will submit to the counter and then after uh, uh, one day or uh, maybe uh, you submit in the morning, they will select the output which is a printout from the printer in the uh, evening. People used to do that from other departments, other even from other universities. People used to come and then do the punched card work, and then they submit and then go. At that time, they they appointed two people for doing that alone. This is because the punch card printing it requires some knack. It's like typing, but then it requires some knack. And so somebody cannot spend too much time on that. I mean, people working in research areas. They uh, spend half the time on the, uh, using the punch card reader, uh, they will not have enough time for other things. No? So, punch printing punch cards alone, they appointed one Lakshmi English and I remember another person, uh, two people they appointed. Uh, the I used to learn to use the machine and all that on Saturdays. Because five days I used to work in the department, six day Saturday, I put my first daughter in Kendriya Vidyalaya here. So morning I used to drop her and come and sit the whole day in the computer center, learn other uh, topics and so on. It went like that. Uh, so my, actually, um, how what prompted me to move to computer science? At that time, you know, Professor A. Ramachandran was the director. He was uh, supporting interdisciplinary work and research. In fact, he used to make people work in other uh, departments also. That's why I started, uh, I mean, interacting with management department, with the uh, chemistry department, biotechnology department. So, I had uh, a fairly, uh, a kind of a comprehensive background I, I could develop. So, that actually prompted me to go to, uh, to move to computer science department. And that with the book, with my background, you know, I could move very easily and uh, it was a seamless uh, transfer. I mean, I won't say I, I had a problem. But usually, you know, when you move to some other domain, you always feel the entrance effect, you know, send it. There's always some sort of a turbulence initially. So I could stabilize on the turbulence and then uh, try to move forward. So my my actual focus um, when I was in chemical, in, in computer science department, my I used to teach simulation and war and database systems. So because I have been accustomed to simulation even when I was in chemical, 
So I used to teach uh, the simulation of chemical plants. So in the same mode, I started teaching um, this uh, uh, simulation subject. How to simulate one machine on the other machine, like PDP-11. How to, I mean, simulate PDP-11 onto 370. What are the parameters to be taken into account? So this kind of a problem I used to do. I used to do simulation also for management people. I used to teach uh, simulation for management people according to their uh, needs and requirements. And I used to teach war also, basic war as well as advanced war. And I always concentrated more on application areas because I'm a little bit, uh, I mean, doubtful about my competence in the theory. So I always concentrated on the application areas. So even my, all the theses that I have, I have produced in, um, in computer science, they were all related to some sort of commercial application, like management games, right? It was one of the theses which was very much appreciated because, you know, without uh, gaming, uh, how do you now try to understand the, the commercial uh, environment or the firmament? So this is one of the things which I used to do. Since I was also interacting with uh, Dr. Ramani, I used to be associated with all his uh, projects, you know, even his research work, like um, service after sales is one of the most important area. You know? So in that way, I have been actually interacting with most of the departments. Um, then uh, I was also involved in CRB. I think Center for Rural Development, you must have heard of it in those days. Professor Indiration used to be very, very conscious about, about this particular aspect because he wanted to contribute to appropriate technology. Well, there was a lot of tirade against IIT, you know, that uh, people are not concentrating on appropriate technology. They are not uh, giving out. They, they seem to work only for academic excellence, right? So he wanted to prove that um, IITs can also be capable of implementing appropriate technology. So we started a habitat in Narayanaburam, right? It's a very beautiful habitat. At that time, Professor Radhakrishnan was actually steering that activity. He's the son of Dr. Bhagavantam. So he was also associated with Costet. So I was also involved in the design, the design of biogas because they wanted to put up a biogas plant, then uh, windmills, uh, then solar energy system, then uh, the agricultural systems. So it was a very nice habitat. If you look at the, the whole system, you know, it was very nice. They wanted to replicate this, uh, this kind of model across the entire Coromandel coast. Okay. So for two years, it was uh, doing very well. I don't know how it was all given up due to what reasons, you know, nobody knows. Because uh, it was a very good one and uh, I was also involved in the design of biogas plants and we developed uh, a system, a scrubbing system to convert uh, this biogas to get enriched in methane. Because uh, biogas contains methane and carbon dioxide essentially. So if you now remove carbon dioxide, it will get enriched in methane. In fact, we used to, uh, I mean, adopt it for building purposes. We also showed those experiments. So CRD was uh, doing very well for about two years later on, how it uh, got that kind of, uh, I mean, uh, why, why, why it was stopped, it's a, it's a million dollar question. So who is responsible, how it has been stopped? So the, Can I ask you to, ma, to add to this? You had mentioned that uh, your analysis for your PhD work was computational. Huh? You you had done a lot of analysis for your PhD work. Huh? Uh, what computers did you use? Can you talk about that and about the other computers that were on campus before the 370? So, so before it came, yes. I was teaching at the Anna University, 1620, IBM 1620. See, previously, the, in Anna University had that particular computing facility. 1620, then they have 1130, and then 360, IBM 360, and then IBM 370. That was the kind of hierarchy. 
So I was, uh, I was also, uh, I mean, they gave me some permission, you know, from the institute. So I used to, uh, I mean, work on 1620, IBM 1620. That's not a multi-programming system, it's a... Uh, about the PDP-11, sir, can you tell us some details? Uh, it was there on campus, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was there in the electrical department. Yeah. So we used to work on PDP-11 and see how this PDP-11 can be simulated on IBM 370. How do you measure that kind of components, you know, the, the kind of software components? How do you make 370 look like PDP-11? A very interesting experiment, you know. So, we sort of see in, in, in my simulation regime, so I could show you a few of these things, you know. And then even while teaching, I, I used to bring in all those aspects. Uh, when did we get the PDP-11, sir, so in, in IIT Madras? Huh? The PDP-11, hmm. when did we get it? Um, maybe around 1976 or so. Uh, I don't exactly remember. So, so this was after the IBM came in? Yeah, I, after IBM 370 came in, mm. so we had that particular system. But earlier, uh, there were analog computers that yeah, analog computers that were from. there. Lot of analog computers were there. So initially, you know, it was very interesting when I was in AC College. I was working with uh, Professor Ramachandran. I think we heard he is the cousin of Dr. Sarsidi Raman. So she actually brought out uh, a computer, an analog computer called Leelavati, right? It will work for three simultaneous equations. So that, that is uh, three equations, three unknowns, you know. So you, you put it up. And then later on, you know, it's a very sad state of affairs. You now he wanted to get a Nobel laureate for uh, his uh, work on collagen model, right? So protein model, he actually brought out, uh, it, it, the whole structure was uh, designed by him. He wanted to do it, but unfortunately from Sweden, somebody else has actually done it and uh, she could snatch away that, <laughs> that, that noble on it. So uh, he, he did the first analog computing, you know, Lilovati computer, three unknowns, three equations. I was working on that, in, in fact. That was my initial exposure to say about the analog computing. Uh, so, Professor Kamala, you had mentioned uh, you had worked with uh, uh, Dr. Siromani. Yeah. Did you also work with uh, Gift Siromani? Yeah. Did you, what was it them. like? And, uh, Both of them. Yes. Uh, actually. Uh, and, and can you confirm it was 75 that you joined IIT? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, can you tell us about your work here? Yeah. My uh, thesis work was on array grammars and at that time there was an open uh, problem posed by Professor Rosenfeld of uh, University of Maryland and uh, it was uh, whether the two classes intersect or whether one is included in the other or some, some such question. I don't want to go to the technical details of it. And uh, in my thesis I attempted that and then we solved the open problem saying that the two classes intersect. And at the time, it was a breakthrough result yes. or something like that. So, uh, the Finland, uh, one person, Saloma, he was uh, the major person working in that area at that time. He appreciated and then uh, he called this sort of parallelism. I mean, my guide and I worked on that. So, the paper was published with both our names. And uh, he called this type of parallelism Indian parallelism. So, from that time onwards, the, that particular type of parallelism was called Indian Parallelism. And uh, afterwards, one professor Kudlek from uh, Germany worked on that area and uh, he did a lot of work on that. So, that is a theoretical area. Afterwards, uh, when I joined here, as I told you, uh, uh, I, I was teaching mainly the two theoretical courses. And in 1982, the department was started. From center, it became a, a department. 
and uh, I think uh, 79 or 80, maybe 80, we got the prime machine. The first time uh, mm -hmm. IBM uh, shifting from IBM 370 yes. to yeah. place and the prime, minish, prime uh, machine was uh, bought at that time. And uh, so people started working. There was a the PC lab. Uh, in the computer. In the PC center. lab, no, that yeah. came later. That came later. That right. came later. Right. 1982, the BTEC program was started mm -hmm. and the center became a department. And the first batch of uh, students, 18 students were admitted in 1982. Right. They, the, they came out in 86. 1986. So, I, I actually the, the first batch I took four courses. A lot of courses were theoretical at that uh, time. In fact, war also I taught for the American, not that theory. So, war after, uh, I think four courses and maybe one elective I taught, and they used to call me class teacher <laughs> <laughs> for that particular uh, batch. And the PC idea of PC was uh, the started around 86 or something like that. We did not have email or internet, or all those things were not uh, there at that time. In 1985, the first time I went to abroad, uh, Germany, I saw, uh, I visited a professor from Karlsruhe and he showed me his system and then uh, one professor from uh, Canada was, had sent a mail to him. It was so mm -hmm. surprising for me that people could talk or send mail in uh, uh, using uh, systems and uh, was a thrill. But uh, email facility came to our department in 89. The idea of PC okay. uh, was there but uh, it uh, was implemented in Professor Eginarayana was uh, head of the department. After Professor Muthukrishnan, Kalyana Krishnan took over. Uh, that is the time when the prime machine was uh, there and it was used. But it's not PC. Lot of terminals were there. It's not punch card machine and all that. You can use a keyboard and you can do the uh, typing in and all that. But even then, no, there was no sort of a graphical thing. In uh, IBM 370, you have a very big uh, plotter and then when you want to plot a graph, you had uh, the pen will plot the graph and so yeah. on. It was like that. But here, uh, I mean, the, you can have something, but it was not uh, very... Uh, the same. When PCs, uh, Professor Iginarana wanted to bring in the PCs and then I think 80, 88 or 89 only we got the PCs and then email facility we got in 1989 only. Mm -hmm. But uh, before that what happened was there was one project, class, class project, I don't know, the CLASS, Computer Literacy and… Uh, the BBC Micro? No, uh, yeah, BBC Micro. Right. Uh, BBC Micro and uh, Professor Mahabala was uh, involved in that and uh, some selected schools were started, uh, chosen and then they were given two systems or three systems for school and then the teachers were trained in that. Mainly four programs uh, were taught. One was a Excel sheet like that, the other one was uh, drawing things and then uh, bird processing, things mm. like that. Mm. So. That was one uh, thing and then he was, uh, like, things were taking place so fast, you know, that uh, 84, it was a major project. Everybody was uh, thrilled, the school teachers mm -hmm. were all thrilled and all that. But uh, in uh, 87, 86, schools started getting pieces and they started a uh, computer science uh, sections and so on. Mm -hmm. So it ha had no... Uh, value after uh, say 87 the project was there till 90 uh, and towards the end the last two three years i was looking after the project class project so still many schools did not have the computer facility so we used to call the teachers and then train them uh, a little bit but but then so much development has taken place now when i joined uh, the, the department it was real one real one was uh, the uh, what to say it's uh, programming like it was a uh, sort of uh, rule or sastra or something like that I would say for the Vedam or <laughs> for the computer at that time. Then Pascal came, uh, she came and so on, the changes were taking place. There was a 
even email facility was uh, started in 89 but it was not very sort of some days it will work some days it will not work and things uh, like that but uh, there used to be something called a, a talk and you can chat over the computer and then uh, over talk and then you have to give the other machines address or something like that so that uh, sort of uh, thing was there over talk means uh, old talk that uh, some some machine had only talk and if oh, you have o talk in one machine and you had talk in another machine they will not collaborate uh, <laughs> it was uh, something like that till 93 and uh, internet came only in uh, 97 98 uh, something like that at that time we had that uh, internet project yeah. and the internet project uh, was handled by professor raghav so i mean lot of uh, things changed, started changing PC lab or maybe eighty eight, eighty nine. We started uh, having PC labs and so on. Then the Siemens was uh, bought in ninety two night, around ninety ninety one night like that. I think and after ninety one, eighty nine, eighty nine, eighty yes, yeah, correct, eighty nine. No, Siemens. This glass project which you are referring, yes. Uh, it's a very interesting study. The, from UK, we got a lot of uh, machines, <laughs> very, very nice machines, and then uh, we, we used to uh, take them to the respective schools. They, they had color screens, I think. Yes, yes color screens. That was very beautiful. Yes. Uh, see, yep. and uh, we used to take them to the schools. You know, it, it's a mobile uh, system. You know, and a um, lot of teachers, you know, got trained in the in the system. And they started publishing papers in uh, in computer science. So even in central school, because I used to be associated with the central school here, but most of the teachers, you know, they used to uh, do a lot of work on computing. So, so with that, uh, with the system. In fact, uh, the, see, we have a computer center and computer science department are two separate units. But they were all under the control of uh, the head of the department of computer science. I took over uh, uh, as I said in nineteen eighty nine December, so up to nineteen ninety two December. Then she took over from me. So when I was uh, doing that, you know, two major events we could do. Of course, uh, because of uh, Professor Mrs. Swami was then the director. Then uh, she gave us a lot of support and solicitude to the Department of Computer Science. In fact, uh, we did uh, during my regime only that networking. The entire campus networking was actually finished. It, it was in a record time, about one and a half years. Then one and a half years, the whole system is true, is up. I think we would have seen the 19. All the uh, I mean computers are connected in all the hostels. So we had uh, the data transfer, image transfer, voice transfer. All the three lines are being put. A very nice uh, networking system. But in some places we used the fiber optics. Of course, coaxial system was there throughout. But in some places where we want speeds, you know, so we used to have uh, this fiber optics system. Then in the one more event which I could do as a, as I said to bring in a workstation complex, all light of uh, sun workstations we got, you know. So a lot of funding was given to us by Professor Swami. So I should be very grateful to him. For uh, developing the the department by allocating few more funds to us at that time, so these are the two major uh, things uh, that I could do as a head. But all the cooperation I got from all the faculty members, right? So I should say with, with a lot of pride that I could enjoy the the cooperation, the unstinted cooperation from our director, from my colleagues. From uh, people from other departments, right? So it was uh, one of the things which I could do. So could you tell us more about who your colleagues were right from the beginning, sir? The early okay. stages, the faculty members uh -huh. in the computer science department. The first, the uh, first is of course Professor Mahabala. So he he was my first colleague. No, 
then second is professor muti krishna then dr kalyan krishna then um, if i remember dr s c raghavan then professor dr parameshwaran who was actually looking after the ai laboratory maybe developed a very good ai lab also artificial intelligence lab then dr pandurangan then this is kamala kriti vasan you know <laughs> so who is to always uh, tell me what i should do and all that she has been guiding me also so to say so these are all some of the people but in the in the computer center one mr sesha sai so must have heard about him then uh, ramanujam he is no more now then other faculty member other members of the computer Sir, center senior huh? sir uh, doctor no, at the time professor natesh kumar was the system manager initially when the ibm 370 was got then later the mr sinwasan took over as a system manager there was one mr dinadayal bhai dinadayal was there yeah he was very very close to me and then um, he did lot of uh, work for me and then uh, he cooperated very nicely so we i could bring up uh, a few improvements you know in the computer center also this is uh, my so the kind of uh, projects i handled you no know, major projects i handled in in computer science one is on agriculture so it was a very interesting uh, study so it lasted for about 3 years so they wanted to get uh, a behavioral equation for uh, predicting the yield it's a forecasting equation right so how to uh, assess the effect of uh, the artificial fertilizers on the native fertilizers so we have uh, soil nitrogen soil potash soil phosphorus similarly we have the in the in the actual uh, Uh, artificial system you have the potash nitrogen as well as phosphorus right how do they interact it's a multicollinear system so i thought it is not i i will absolutely no idea because i am not an agriculturist so initially i started off and i found that uh, the system is not working i am always getting a negative sign on potash so what does it mean potash is detrimental to the growth of the plant right at the time uh, ms swaminathan was also involved in this in this kind of study because uh, at the time um, dr dhanabalan moshi was the director of agriculture the state agriculture department so he actually in, in gave us this particular work to us so i was actually sponsor i was actually the person who has been involved completely in this work So I had to interact with those people. So a lot of experiments have been done in the out of the way. The it's uh, you know there there is a research station. So uh, we used to do that. So it was a very interesting study, and it took a lot of time for us to understand how we we could get over that negative sign. So we we somehow managed, and we gave uh, produced a lot of very nice equations, you know, behavioral equations to predict. they the yield for different types of crops because you know we have the the water level the spacing between the plants right the the kind of seasonality we have to take into account all those aspects so we used what is called the ridge regression not the regular regression ridge regression concept for taking care of the multicollinearity this is one project in which uh, i mean i attained some sort of efficiency you know it was a, it was a it's a new thing for us at that time, at that point in time the second project i did was a nutrition okay some american foundation project it lasted for 3 years to 4 years so it was to predict how many number of people are below the poverty line lots of data were collected so there were many investigation teams you know first team group a group b group c they used to visit the same places and try to collect the data you know what would see quite surprisingly 
the first investigation report second investigation report third investigation report they are all divergent same people have been interviewed same location you find different sets of data how do you harmonize in that kind of uh, flagrant uh, divergence of data how to get at the consistency of data this has been a major issue so human data processing unless you get the data consistency whatever you know produce is not is of no avail you know it's absolutely futile so we have to do a lot of uh, understanding at the time so many people are involved uh, dr uh, <coughs> nitin patel have you heard of them they from um, ibm from i'm sorry iim dr nitin patel um then dr seth planning commission then dr sambrani who was in anand thing you know in gujarat so there are a lot of people and my humble self you know from iit they are all great stalwarts you know so the entire work was done in ibm in ibm 370 so that is one of the most interesting experiments you know in a real time data I mean you can do something i mean academically but when, when it comes to the question of handling such kinds of data you know it's very very difficult it's very formidable to get at the correct type of equation the correct type of scenario right statistical scenario and how to implement it also is not just getting an equation you must know how to implement it in the real time scale that has been a real problem in any process you know growth process the cardinal issue is one of sustainability right this has been a major problem in most of the practical applications i have a question about hardware sir uh um, at some at some time there was a lot of interest in uh, parallel computing and supercomputers yeah. and so on and mm. we had our initiative in uh, bangalore i think where the uh, param computer mm. so mm. so what was the reaction in our department was there any effort made to develop similar computers or uh, what went on what was the thinking then sir? in computer center in computer in, in our department yes no department uh, to the extent i i know of i mean my you know so it, 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 till i was there Uh, I don't think uh, we have uh, developed any uh, parallel systems here. But personally, I was actually interacting with some other groups, you know. So there uh, we could see the the parallelism, you know. So was there any obstacle to developing hardware here, or uh, there's been a focus on software and mm. operating systems and so on? Isn't it? See, in, ter- in terms of uh, parallel computing. it's a question of reorientation see you don't i mean specially design a hardware yes. right it's a question of how you orient the the whole system to develop that kind of parallel path distributed computing is absolutely everybody is very common everybody knows about it right in fact my one of my research work is on distributed computing so on distributed simulation using the concept of distributed computing that we did ah mm-hmm. uh, in some of our earlier students i uh, have uh, been doing very well the earlier uh, so students were chris gopal krishnan and uh, kriti ramamidam and people like that they are all in top uh, positions uh, uh, today they were in the 1980s and many of our students went abroad and, and are in very good positions and still doing very well there yes and uh, we had two big projects mhrt funded a lot of uh, money to two projects information sciences and information technology So through that we could buy a lot of uh, hardware, I mean PCs and uh, workstations and so on. So that was a very big uh, support from the MHRD, and of course there it was also supported a lot. So as far as uh, I am concerned, 
I have been interacting with the mathematics department a lot on theoretical uh, uh, aspects. And uh, the later uh, part of my career, that is after uh, 90, 1994, the idea of DNA computing was a big uh, idea. So, how can you do all the computing with the DNA? That was the question. So it is still not a success, but at least lots of, lot of research is going on in that uh, area. So I switch. It's also a lot of theory involved, and so I was started working on the area of uh, uh, DNA computing, membrane computing, uh, or rather, I would call it as unconventional models of computing. That's so, so in that uh, in once we tried to do a small experiment using DNA with Professor Chandra of uh, chemistry department. So, but uh, it was very difficult because one has to know, have a knowledge of a lot of chemistry and a lot of computation. What is computation and so on. So uh, we had a student who uh, was working with us and uh, he beat a student. He, so he used to sort of, I and Sandra used to sit together, but then what Chandra used to tell, I don't, I would not understand fully. Then he will translate like uh, French to German uh -huh. or something like that. I see. And what I, I used to tell, she will not understand. So uh -huh. he used to translate and uh, put it in her language or something like that. So like that it went on. We, uh, I did the calculation or whatever you have to do that. Theoretical part of it, uh, with my help, that student, of course. And then later on, she fabricated on uh, apparatus. And by the time the student left for years, he finished his PhD. So another student took over, and somehow he finished the experiment. It was uh, good, very successful. But then we did not want to spend too much time on, uh, I mean, it's a full time job. We had other work to do, other research, other things, so on. Another thing which I was working on was motion planning, robo motion planning and so on, theoretical aspects of it. We had a Indo German project on that. So I was the principal coordinator and Professor Pondran was the co coordinator. So we had some interaction with them. How something could be moved in the presence of moving obstacles, movable obstacles, and things like that. Had some work and we had some Indo Israel project also on black coats and so on. So, the, for that, also people visited here and we visited there and so on. We had some DST projects on uh, this thing and so on. Later on, uh, Professor Pondran moved on to cryptography. Now, I was continuing uh, with the computational geometry or motion planning, and then I also moved on to the unconventional models of computer. Introduce some new courses on that and that. Uh, okay. One of the uh, interesting experiments we did in disaster management, as I was mentioning to you, along with Dr. Ramne. Yes. We developed a, an animation model, simulation model, by taking um, 60 to 70 years of weather data, and then we developed a very nice model. In fact, we, we convened a, a conference uh, of uh, all the district collectors. Um, Dr. Ramani and myself, we were actually doing that. They looked at our model and then said, oh, it is a very, very nice model, a very didactic model, very nice uh, pedagogic model. But uh, will it solve my problem? <coughs> no, their anxiety is, Everything has been taken care of technically, but what about the human truancy? Suppose I want to put it in the real-time scale, the collectors feel that the paramedical staff may not be available on that day, they may go on leave, right? And people cannot be shifted to the shelters because they are, they are adamant, they don't want to move the premises. So they have been quiet to move to the, uh, to the shelters. So, can your model predict how to do this kind of problem? How to reflect the human truancy in the model, in the behavioral model? Your model is very good academically. 
we saw all the trajectory of the cyclone, how it goes, you know, what kind of uh, things people should take care, what are the uh, remedial measures to be taken, all that is very good. But uh, when, how, how can suppose the collector is out of station, who is to do the delegation? Who is responsible for the financial commitment? Now, these are all some of the, one of the collector, very intelligent uh, person. Now, he has questioning us on all aspects of uh, the practical problems. So, we have to revise our model to take care of the human prevention. Okay, so this is one of the things. And another thing I want to um, mention about our feedback from the students, you know, which is very, very interesting. I was teaching uh, this uh, computing, you know. You were there in the. You were there in that. Yes. Yes. Uh, in that uh, course, you know. One of the students, and the feedback, you know, uh, they, we used to get the feedback from the students. One of the students, you know, wrote. One of the students wrote, "Your lectures are very scintillating." The teacher is advised not to indulge in verbal paraphernalia. Simplicity is the essence of good teaching. Mm -hmm. I was wonderstruck. I called him and asked him, you have written in this way. No, sir, your lectures are very good, but the contents are completely masked by your embellished English. <laughs> okay? I said, uh, to see, when you are now teaching 120, 150 students, they become restive after 15 minutes or 20 minutes, you know. They are all young people, vibrant people. So, when I want to capture their attention, what should, what should I do? I have to unleash my bird power on them. Okay. He said, it's all very good, sir, but people were all, I mean, focused on your English, not on the contents. <laughs> so, that's what the, the, so what he was trying to, I mean, tell me, please don't advertise the contents. Please teach and uh, communicate the contents. That is the sum and substance of his feedback. Another very interesting feedback I got, you know, these are a lot of feedbacks, but uh, all the all those feedbacks have given me a lot of boost, you know. What I should do and what I should not do. He is a very young chap, you know, from 12th standard. He is now commenting <laughs> on your lecture. Another feedback when I was the head. I didn't have much time to prepare. I used to teach simulation for the MTech program. Then uh, after the actual courses, I asked them. Usually I used to hobnob with those people. So I asked them, uh, what is the feedback? I was rewarded with counterfeit glees, you know. They, they were just laughing in their sleeves. I asked them, what's the matter? They said, sir, after 42 lectures, 22 lectures were very good, they are all from Professor Nagarajan. The other 20 lectures doesn't seem to be from Professor Nagarajan. So, what does it mean? They are not up to the mark. But how nicely they have put that uh, kind of feedback, you know. It is not in the affirmative, but the kind of diplomacy and the sensibility they had in expressing their, I, I mean, dissent in such a fine way. So, this is one of the feedback. Another feedback is when I was teaching thermodynamics, right? I used to be very fond of thermodynamics. So, I taught them. I taught them in a holistic way. In, in which way? In a, in a very nice way. I don't teach first law of thermodynamics, second law, third law in that way. I said the entire thermodynamics is based on PVT, right? So, unless uh, the measurements are done properly, all your derived quantities are absolutely useless. Yes. So, I started in that way, I brought in the Bridgman table and then from there I derived law 1, law 2, law 3, isn't it? So, in the textbook, this kind of holistic approach is not given. They will say first law of thermal image, second law, third law. So, they felt, what is this man doing? So, you know what the kind of feedback I got the I wanted to get the best feedback for my thermodynamics. I got the worst feedback. <laughs> so 
what is best for you is not best for the others you know a very interesting feedbacks i had number of, see i can keep on talking about the feedbacks because all those feedbacks are not meant to hurt you hurt your susceptibilities yes. they are meant to give you the kind of uh, performance you you have shown in the classroom very interesting in that way you know, i used to appreciate all the it students you know that uh, they they don't have any reservation at the same time they don't hurt you also what you are in the class is being assessed in the right way and in the right sense so one of the things which i used to enjoy i used to bask in the warmth of such feedbacks but can you tell us about your experience in the huh? uh, the campus as you saw it because yeah. you seen it from 1960 or 61 yeah yeah uh, what are the it's changes a, it's a seen? very interesting life i moved into the campus in 1962 right i moved out in 1994 32 years i have been the denizen of this children surroundings you know pastoral surroundings but initially there were no path they were all meandering path you no know? in the night she cannot go alone so we used to move in the group and our uh, companions are our snakes you know mm-hmm. you'll see a lot of snakes moving around okay mm-hmm. and they, they don't harm you so long as you don't harm them they don't harm you so they will be doing that so no lights at the time no proper loads right So we used to walk around. But Dr. Venkatesh Chulu was uh, then the head of the Department of uh, Chemical Engineering. We all walked together, okay, talking about the campus. It's a very nice scenery, scenery and uh, it has a pastoral look, and it's very conducive for your growth and uh, development. So very nice life in the in the campus. Social life is very good. There are a lot of activities. in fact i was uh, the secretary and the vice president of the staff club so uh, i brought in uh, this open uh, cricket you know the dr ramachandran stotri so when i was the secretary and the vice president then i brought uh, this this kind of an activity from the from, from uh, the staff club then i also uh, brought in uh, the district tournament in chess so these were the two activities i did you know when i was uh, in the staff club so what are activities are excellent and uh, people used to move with each other there's so much of amity there's so much of fraternity and uh, there's so much of harmony so the life was very very interesting in the in the campus if somebody has not utilized or taken advantage of this ambiance I do not know what to say about that person. Yes, I I did not live in inside the campus, so I don't have to say much about it. But I want to say about the NPL NPTEL program. Uh, so that was uh, later in, after two thousand, and then uh, it was uh, I mean other universities colleges they really are benefited by this program. We have recorded a uh, uh, lot of things. Uh, in all subjects and in pitel this then the it has been uploaded the students and teachers they are regularly using that i had given about 40 lectures on discrete mathematics and 42 on automata theory and even till now no whenever people see me where sometimes in the airport you are sitting or in the, uh, suddenly somebody comes to adi kamla kritivas and i have been benefited by your lectures too much okay So because of that, I also wrote two books uh, uh, on an automata theory with Professor Rama of Maths Department, and another one is adaptation work of Professor uh, Rosen's uh, book. These two books are still being used in lot of uh, colleges and uh, universities. So, so and uh, other thing is uh, uh, one of the things with Indian culture about my work is about column patterns. Mm-hmm. My PhD thesis was on array grammars. It had one chapter on how to generate columns using array grammars. Okay. And later on, I was uh, I went to US under the Fulbright Fellowship. Then from there, I went to Canada, and there I worked with one professor. Uh, uh, they called them Professor P, <laughs> University of Virginia. I just went there for about a week or so, 
So uh, earlier we met in U.S. in a conference, and then he invited me to go there. There he had written some program, and he used to how to draw column patterns using some are repetitive type. You can draw bigger, bigger version of it uh, just by giving the iteration. So something called L systems were used for that a grammar uh, form called L systems. And if you write a grammar with three, four rules, and then it will generate visual patterns. Also, it could generate uh, some flowering patterns and things like that. So, but uh, my work was mainly on uh, column patterns, how to generate all the, uh, write the grammar. I used to write the grammar and give it to him. He has written the program and then uh, some uh, spline approximation and all that. It used to do the curves and oh. very nicely. Mm. And after I came back from uh, the trip, uh, some of the MTech students did as project. And they developed more and more on that. Uh, do, do we have working, I mean, demonstration models of those programs? I don't have the demonstration. I have some uh, uh, photographs. Or the columns themselves. Yes. Yeah, right. photographs right. I have. <laughs> okay. uh, I, 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 what happened to the IBM 370, sir? After it was, uh, after its life was over, the IBM 370. Hmm. Did we retain it or what did we do? No, 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 it has been sold to CMC. The corporate that uh, they took computer it. maintenance corporation. Yes, yes. So we had some problems also because it came as a gift in what way we should sell it to CMC. So there were many audit objections also. I see. Maybe we could somehow manage to <laughs> manage to cover up, you know. Yes. So <laughs> at the time yeah. I was like head, you know. So not for uh, I don't think so. When Siemens uh, computer was brought in and then we have about more than 32 terminals being connected to Siemens. So it is all very interesting experience and experiment. So the so, Siemens was in turn sold off? Huh? Was it disposed of the Siemens also? Which one? The Siemens system. Where? The Siemens. Siemens system. Siemens After it was Siemens, sold. I think, was uh, also still, sold. Then it was all, I mean, it is still there. So long as I was there, uh, Siemens was still there. Mm. But later on, what happened? Because it was replaced. Yes. I don't know what happened to that Siemens system. Right. So Siemens later system on, better systems were there. Than there. That's right. So uh, I moved out in 1994. So now it's uh, 23 years since I left <laughs> the organization. You know, so many developments would have That's taken true. place. Right. Right. Actually, 1992 center was separated from uh, the department. When I took over as head of the department, I have was handling only the department. Center was separated at that time. And uh, so we <laughs> Very nice at the time. When uh, this was actually moved out, uh, they wanted to separate uh, computer science department from computer center. center at the time, the NBC Swami was there. So I was a little bit uh, adamant. No? I do not want the computer center to be dissociated from the yeah. <laughs> computer science department. Right, right, right. So there used to be a lot of uh, <laughs> exchange, you know, between me and the director, but it was all sold in right. my favor. Right. So, very nice days, you know, yes. in IIT. And then uh, I learned a lot of things from, uh, from this group, from students, from my colleagues. Okay. And it was a very interesting benediction. When I retired, it was not considered as only a departmental uh, event. Mm. It was considered as an you know, institute event. Mm. So, the, in the, the, she was the one who actually organized that valediction. Mm. And uh, in the central lecture theater, so the, all the departments have been invited. And uh, they put up uh, a conference also. On the on the valediction day, uh -huh. okay. and it was a very memorable day. I'm always nostalgic about that great event. Do you have photographs from that event, sir? Oh, the photographs I don't have. Do you have such photographs? No. no. Okay. Because it, it must be there somewhere. You know, I will try to get uh, some of the photographs. Yes, you know? really like to. Because see I thought at this age I don't need such photographs. <laughs> so. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, but, so you, you, that's what I felt. You know. You are so interdisciplinary, so it's quite understandable, yeah, yeah. I think. Yes. 
but uh, very nice time, yeah. very very happy time, right? There may be a few ripples, you know, that will always be there in the system. Unless you have some friction, there is no <laughs> there is no enjoyment, you know. My hobby is uh, literature. You know, I always have a natural fly for literature. I used to read up a lot um, in poetry, especially Milton's poetry, Wordsworth, Keats. Do you have any anecdotes or anything same? Hmm? Anecdotes, either of you. Uh, anecdotes, uh, I was telling you about my own uh, students, you know. So, very interesting. Some Sometimes, you know, you have to be uh, on the pros, you know. <laughs> Even kids now challenge you. <laughs> they have uh, this uh, iPad. See, when I was waiting for the, the other card. So, one, one kid, you know, UG, that is Upper Kinder, she was sitting and she was uh, trying to do something on the iPad. I asked her, what are you doing? Then she said, um, Tata, this one, Grandpa, this is, I am trying to do some games. Do you like to see? Mm -hmm. Then she showed me the games and she wanted me to play. She was explaining and couldn't understand. So I couldn't do that. She asked me, what are you doing? Mm. I am doing uh, computing, I am a professor in computer science, you know. What are you doing? You didn't know even this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was really... <laughs> I mean, even the kids will challenge you now. You have to be careful because they know better. Mm -hmm. Especially... <laughs> Hey, especially with this uh, smartphone and uh, so because there, of the smartphone, see they are able they to, to the search, uh, download the picture. They are able to visualize the picture. <laughs> and we also feel happy that we should be challenged by those uh, <laughs> tiny thoughts, yes. you know. Yes. <laughs> It was very nice interacting with the such intelligent students. Uh, you know, our uh, we used to get you know, first hundred said, rhymes, I, no? That's right. Computer science. Then I said that then every minute of teaching I used to enjoy. See, the minute you talk, you know, uh, they were thinking five steps ahead. I, I asked her, how did you get the data from uh, where from you will get it on the iPad? You don't know. It is from the digital sky. Have anybody heard of the word digital sky? Mm -hmm. For the first time I heard from the tiny thought. Mm -hmm. She said, uh, no, no, Grandpa, everything is got from uh, the digital sky. So, <laughs> so it's very, very interesting to be with them, to chat with them, to know things from them. So, the the technology has... Uh uh, it's, it's so much, you know, uh, improved that uh, I mean, through Skype and all that people learn now everything from Skype. Actually, for the last uh, two, three years, I have been uh, helping my granddaughter in mathematics, uh, geometry and uh, things through Skype. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. My daughter is in U.S. My son in law is in U.S. My granddaughter has uh, written a book. It is published in Amazon uh, on startup companies. How you should start up a company? What are the things you should take care? Right. The very very interesting book, and now I, I have given my own comments on this book. So, sure. because I am also attached to some of the industries after my retirement. So, now the modern technology has, has changed, you know, there is no question of uh, the, the kind of uh, programming that we used to do. Yes. Yeah. Everything is available and that's open source, mm -hmm. like Bika, now we talk about Bika, we talk about Rapid Binary, we talk about R, we talk about uh, Splunk, Tabula, Mime, so many softwares are available now, floating around in the, in the cyberspace. So, people can make use of them and then they get the federation of all those uh, open source software also. 
Oh, it's a, now the, the technology has changed, you know, considerably and uh, people, uh, they need not have to spend time or effort in programming. The subjectivity level has been taken to objectivity level. So I thank once again the Heritage uh, Center for the opportunity given to us uh, to share our thoughts, random thoughts with uh, yes. the group. Thank you. I also thank the Heritage Center.